All right. Welcome back to Revealing God's Truth. I know it's been a, a little bit, but hopefully we'll get back to uh, some regular uh, videos here pretty soon. I wanted to speak about something tonight that uh, has affected me by my whole life, and it's uh, my uh, severe introversion and social anxiety. And I bring it up because I came across uh, something the other day, and I'll just read it. It's, it's Proverbs uh, chapter eighteen, verse twenty-four. It says, "A man that hath a man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother." As a as as someone that that has difficulty uh, socially. Except for, and I've said this before, when I preach or when I teach, I, I don't have any issue at all. I don't have butterflies or, or I, I have peace. Uh, where, you know, in any other situation, it's not like that. And so I know that, that you know, when I'm giving out God's word, either through preaching or teaching, uh, that... It is it is of God that that uh, God is in it, but I don't I don't have that same peace when it comes to the whole. Well, why aren't you shaking people's hands? Why aren't you mingling? Why why aren't you acting friendly? And what they mean by friendly is nice. Well. Uh, I don't know what to say, but I was looking at that verse, Proverbs 18, 24, and it says, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. This says a man that hath friends. In other words, he already has friends. It's, it's not saying if, if you want friends, then you should be friendly. That's not what this verse says. And on top of that, if you look up the Hebrew uh, word for uh, friendly there, it has nothing to do with friendship or being nice. Nothing at all. And I'm not going to get into it. I, but what I would do is I would challenge each and every one of you that, that see this to look at Proverbs 18, uh, 24 and do a study on it. Do a deep study on it and find out what it means. And understand and it now if you're not willing to be wrong if you're not willing to, to take uh, the traditional view of it and throw it in the trash well don't even bother but if you are willing to to see what God's truth is study that verse you'll see that it has nothing to do with the way that it is used in other words if if you want to have friends then you must be uh, you must fit the extrovert, uh, nice, outgoing uh, way of being. Because if not, you're not right with God. If you're an introvert and uh, you have social anxiety. But what's you know the this this is what's interesting though, you know. If you come to me and you say, well, you know, I'm an extrovert. I've never met a stranger. You know, I can strike up a conversation uh, with a stranger in, in the grocery store in aisle two. Um, and, and boy, I can, I can witness to anybody at any point. It well, you know what I'm going to say to that? That is awesome. That is absolutely awesome. And in a way, I, I wish that I was like that. I do. But you see, God didn't make me that way. God made me a different way. And God gave me different talents. And God uh, made me the type of person that, that second part of that verse, it says, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. That means that's a friend that it doesn't matter how you act, they're still going to be your friend. It doesn't matter if you say hey or not they're still going to be your friend uh if you need them they you know it, it doesn't matter they'll be there well see that's the that's the way god has made me no i'm not outgoing i'm not the handshaking mingling type but you will not find a fiercer more loyal friend 
And so I don't know what else you you would want. You know, would you rather have would you rather have a friend that is distant, but that if you need them, if you need prayer, if you need um, help with your study, and if you, if you need just someone to talk to, some someone to to give you some advice, you know, whatever the situation. If you needed them, they would be right there, willing and and would fight for or with you tooth and claw. Would you rather have the distant friend that was like that, or would you rather have the friend that is always talkative and, and always wanting to shake your hand and always wanting to be right there, but yet it's never of any substance? There's nothing, you never get any uh, uh, godly fellowship. Uh, you, you, you know, you never hear anything about God and, and, and what God has done for them. And, um, and hey, look, I was studying about this. And, and you know, you, you don't get any of that. But, boy, they sure are nice. Well, that's not really a friend. I would rather have the distant friend than the, the up-close uh, so-called friend. Now... Is there anything wrong with having the up close friend that is also that is also the kind of person that will be there no matter what if you need them? No, there's nothing wrong with that. That is awesome. But rarely do you find, you know, both. But not saying that they that they that they aren't out there. But if you come to me and you say, "Yeah, boy, I, I you know, I." I I can talk to anybody. That's awesome. But why can't you say the same thing about me? Well, you know, I just, I, I just, I don't, I don't know. There's something about the, I just don't do the shaking hands thing. I'm just not comfortable there. I, I'm not designed that way. Why can't you be as okay with me as I am with you? Because if you try to go back to Psalms eighteen twenty four and say, well, if you want friends, you 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 got to be friendly. That's not what that verse says. That's not what it says. That's not what it means. This verse is not talking about that. You can misuse it all you want. That ain't what it says. And so, why is it that you're so uh, I, now? Am I saying that we shouldn't all witness? Absolutely not. We are called of God to witness to everyone. But I think that God has order, and I think that God calls individuals to do certain things. We are all called to witness. We should all, no matter what the situation, I believe that even with the most introverted, social anxiety-ridden person, that if God wants to use them in a situation, he can but will he use them in every situation in that way all the time? No, I do not think he will. I think that each of us are given talents and each of us are given personalities, and so we are used in different ways of God. I have found an avenue through technology this way to be able to reach people for God and be able to help people and, uh, and try to be an influence for Christ in a way that I can. I do that through here. I do that through preaching. do that through teaching. And the, the preaching and teaching is not only online, but it's in, it's in person. And so that is how God uses me and that I, I, I know that I am uh, in God's will. <clears throat> and so I just ask for, for those of you that those believers that don't have the the introversion, that don't have the social anxiety. When you when you tell others that we're supposed to be loving, and uh, we're supposed to be understanding with each other, how about apply that to your life when you? start to belittle those 
uh, that don't act in the way that you think they should act. Because I can't find in Scripture where it says that I'm supposed to be nice. It does say I'm supposed to be kind. Well, those two words are not the same. There is a distinction, and it's a perfectly reasonable distinction. To be nice is uh, how you present. To be kind is to desire to do good to people. So you can be kind and not be nice. Just because someone's nice doesn't mean they're right with God. Just because someone is quiet and reserved and and I'm not going to say withdrawn because that's that's not the same thing. Uh, but just because someone is introverted does not mean they're not right with God. You know, an introverted person will socialize if someone approaches them. So they're not being antisocial. So I just I just ask for those of you that don't have that issue before you go making those that do feel like that they are less just ask yourself if you're really in God's will by doing that I I, I think it's I think it's obvious that you're not at, at that point I don't think that that's a spirit of meekness. And so just just consider that just because people don't act now I'm not I'm not saying that I'm not saying that any action you know just because somebody acts a particular way is fine. That's not what I'm saying. If you're if you're outside of God's will then you're sinning. But I'm not talking about sin here. It's not a sin for me not to shake people's hands. It's not a sin for me not to mingle at you know when we have uh, fellowship. Now, if someone approaches me in fellowship and I shun them, okay, I think I've crossed the line at that point. The Bible does call for us to fellowship. So, so all I'm asking. Fellow believers, consider each other. Don't uh, don't put traditions or the uh, outward appearance of uh, that that man has said would should be a particular way in order to be right with God. You know, don't be judgmental. I didn't say judge not because we're supposed to judge. Don't be judgmental. Let's let's fellowship in our own ways. For those of you that are extroverts, reach out to the introverts. <laughs> For those of you that are introverts, be willing to except when the extroverts reach out. I'm not saying now extrovert, when you go to the introvert to say, hey, come do this thing and be all like we are. No, that's not going to happen. That's not the way it is. So when you, if you get turned down at that point, don't don't just write, don't write them off like, like I've experienced, you know, uh, in, in my life, you know, oh, well, we asked him once and he said no. So that means he don't want to have, <laughs> I think we should be better than that. All right. Till next time.